Good morning. Okay, so last night I went out and heard some of the best bar jazz of my life. Um, so I know what Kansas City is capable of. So let's try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Exactly. So hi there, my name is David Blank Edelman. I work for a company called AppSera. And one of the things that I tend to hate the most in life is when you go to a talk or someone says, I'm gonna give you a talk and it's supposed to be a technical talk and it turns into be uh, this marketing talk, right? That is like full of sales. I cannot stand that. So given that, I wanna say sort of a proviso, which is that I will probably wanna say some things that sound a little marketing-y, not very much. And so here's what I propose to do. I have here these three wooden blocks, red, blue, and yellow. What I propose is every time I want to say something that is, uh, you know, could even be construed as being sort of like a marketing salesy thing, I take away one of these blocks. And then, if I've run out of them, I cannot say a single marketing thing anymore. So this way you know that my talk is not gonna be all that. Can we agree that this is a fine and dandy system? Yeah. Great, okay. So let's do it. Um, so I'm gonna take away one at the start to tell you what the company I work for does. Okay, I think that's reasonable. Yes? Sure. Okay. So I work for a company called AppSera. They're in San Francisco. They make this software that allows you, that, that DevOps love because it allows you to sort of take whatever workload you want from a shell script to a container, to an operating system, toss it to the public clouds, or run it on-prem or move it around, and there's a policy engine in the middle of it that allows you to set up these policies. And we might talk a little bit about policies in this particular talk. You'd be very surprised uh, that that will show up. So that's all I wanna say. Um, so let's move on. I think the best way to start my talk is to go to the end of my talk. And the beginning of my talk and the end of my talk is to talking about production. Because in my opinion, production environments are all about trust. It is super important that your, that your thing works. It is super important that you understand in production what your workloads contain. What are you actually running there? You know, that's kind, of, that's kind of important. It's really important to know what can, whatever it is you're running, I'm using workload as sort of the generic way to say things, what can it consume, what resources, what CPU, what memory, you know, what network bandwidth, that sort of stuff. Um, you might have some constraints on where your workload runs. If you're dealing with EU data protection laws, they can't leave Sweden. Or if you have uh, this machine over here that has lots of memory, you want it to run over there. Or maybe it is you have this server that you, have, that you run all your PCI stuff on. So you want to make sure that you can, you can determine where it runs. And finally, and perhaps one of the more crucial things, is you need to know what your thing can talk to. It really is important to say, okay, this thing can talk to that and that's it. Or this thing can talk to the internet or the internet can talk to it. But it's really a bummer in production if you find out that suddenly the thing you're running is somehow talking to large swaths of the internet and you didn't expect it. Right? So that's really a bummer. So you have to kind of pay attention to this sort of stuff. And I think everybody here knows that the bigger the deploy you have, the harder it is to, to know all these things and to, have, to maintain this trust. Um, and if you're doing multiple clouds, which some of you here, is anybody in this room doing at least one plus clouds? Yeah, like so, so, so at least like a good 30%. It gets really, really hard. So what I wanna do is I wanna come up and tell you something I think that will help with this sort of stuff. Um, but the problem that I have is that the thing I wanna talk about um, typically gets associated with uh, like a sleepy time thing, right? So I wanna warn you that I'm gonna say something and you're gonna go like, oh no, I'm gonna just get a nap during this talk, okay? But I wanna let you know that I won't let that happen. I, I promise. So what I want to talk about, and I think part of, part of the solution, is this one little word here, and for those of you in the back uh, on your phones, um, maybe this helps. <laughs> okay, so this is what I want to talk about. Now when I say policy, invariably people have this reaction, because they start thinking about these awesome things like the CBB Security Policy and Procedures Handbook, or uh, maybe they talk about this one, which I highly recommend you wait till the movie comes out for, um, you know like fiscal policy, or maybe even your employee manual, which is just rocks. Um, now, I know, I bet there have been people in this room who have had to sit in on meetings where you're deciding policy, right? Right, at, for your organization. Can you raise your hand if you have? I just want to know, it would really help. Yeah, look, like a large percentage of you. And you know, chances are the meetings look a little bit like this, right? <laughs> Right? Or if, if you've really been doing it for a while, more likely that, that your meeting looks a lot like this, right? 
right? And so I want to suggest that it doesn't have to be that way. I want to suggest that it is possible to have policy be more sexy, okay, than just what I'm saying. And those of you who are at the corners, come on in. There's plenty of space up here. Just let you know, you can come in. Um, so here, let me prove to you it can be sexy. Here is a diagram for policy that my marketing uh, 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 group made. I don't think that counts because, you know, you can make that too. Um, but if, if you don't think that's sexy enough here, let's do this. Okay. Okay. So does this give you the sense of just how sexy policy can be? Because we're going to stick with this music for just a little while because I like it so much. Okay, so here's what I'm going to assert. Chances are that your environment looks a little bit like this, right? You have this long road going straight down that way, or maybe, maybe, just maybe, your environment looks more like this, right? A couple of curves in terms of like when you're trying to get to production, or possibly like this, a little more like that, or I'm willing to bet actually that your environment probably looks more like this, right? Now, one of the things that you may or may not have paid attention to when you saw these pictures, if you were watching, is all the pictures had these things. What are these things? Guardrails, exactly. So here's the point that I want to make to you, um, is we're going to be talking about guardrails. Because if you can set up guardrails for your environment, then it is possible to allow whoever is using your stuff to do what they want, and you can sleep at night because they can't do anything that you didn't say they can do. Right, so this is why I think this is important. And in fact, I'm going to ask you to go demand this sort of guardrails from all of your vendors, from all your open source projects, from all these sort of things. Now, just because I know what kind of crowd this is, who can tell me where this slide comes from? Yes! This is why I love you people so much. You, my people, you know, it's just so great. Yes, it is indeed from Young Frankenstein. You're absolutely right. So what do I mean? What do I mean by like demand policy? The, the situations you have that you might care about is like when a developer wakes up at 2 a.m. goes, you know, I'm sure more memory will make it work better. You know, lots more, <laughs> right? Or yeah, the fact that you're chuckling is a bad sign. Or malware in a pu public Docker image? What malware? Like so, like I don't know. Did you know that the that the, the official MySQL image it probably still does had shell shock in the middle of it? Doesn't that sound great? Go run out of production. Go people, go. It's awesome. Or, uh, you know, all of a sudden your container's talking to, I don't know, it shouldn't be doing anything. Or the new OpenSSL exploit is called, like, I don't know, shaved fuzzy bunny or something, right? Right, and, and we all have to deal with that. And are we vulnerable? I don't know. Or what version of Java are we supposed to be using in our environment? You want to be able to constrain that. Or here's an even better one. Who has the database credentials? It's in the spreadsheet where? And what can those credentials do, right? So. The question that I think that is reasonable to ask is, where is your policy in your environment now? In my experience, your policy, you, you, people have one of two different kinds of environments. First off, they often have um, a department or a person or a group of people whose job it is to handle sort of the compliance and the policy, stuff like that, and they're like the customs guard. Their job is to say no, right, at the right time, in theory. So the problem is, is that doesn't scale work check. It means that every time you want to do something, you need to go talk to this person. If there isn't N of them and they're N of you, it, by, by default, you're going to have to queue, and that doesn't scale, so it's maximally frictional. Or, in my experience, people go with what I would call the wild, wild west, right? Where anybody with a credit card can provision, can provision infrastructure and go get what they want, okay? Now, the problem with the wild, wild west, for those of you who watch westerns, is that invariably somebody takes a bullet, um, <laughs> like a stray bullet. Like, they, they, oh, darn, we forgot to shore up the mine and it fell in. Or, uh, you know, somebody forgot to back up that database or whatever, right? And so that's not so cool. So the tricky thing is, is that what invariably happens is when you have the first kind, often people go off and try to do stuff on their own. If the, if the first kind is so frictional, people go off and do the shadow IT thing on their own, right? Like you've seen it where they go off and provision their own stuff, right? And then congratulations, you have the best or the worst of both worlds. You win or lose, you know? So what would be better? So my opinion, um, what would be better, and this is, by the way, cosplay, so I can show you that one. It's not, you know, not required. Um, I would assert that if you had something that was pervasive, you know, like everywhere in the things that you wanted to control, that was explicit so you could be really super careful about what it is you want to state in your policy sort of world. Um, and this is the key, this is the kicker. It needs to be automatically enforced. If you have a situation where you have uh, lovely software that handles policy, and every once in a while it goes, is this okay? 
okay? How about this? Is this okay? Like, it, it's not worth anything, right? It needs to, it needs to, you need to let the machines do what the machines do well, and let the people do what people do well. Like, um, a Todd Underwood, a, 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 an SRE manager at Google says, you know, stop feeding blood to the machines. Um, and I really truly believe that. So let's talk about what you would need if you were going to do this sort of automatically enforced thing. So first off is the easy one, right? You want to be able to say, I want to constrain things in terms of CPU, disk space, network usage, um, number of things I'm running, or um, maybe I want to know how memory altogether, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's important to be able to control workload to workload stuff. This thing here, my app server talked to my database. That's okay. I, these two things can talk and only they can talk. And I want to sort of give a little hint about that that I think is, that will be useful to you no matter what you decide to do in your life. Um, I think it's super important that when you're giving permission along these lines that it's, that it's really granular, that it's per port, not per container or VM, right? It is the case that you want to make sure that if this guy is talking to this guy, and this is the app, and this is the database server, that it can only talk on the database port, right? Because the reason is, is if someone pops your database server, and it happens, right, um, they can, if you have this lovely transit of trust thing, go attack your app server. But if, in fact, you've only said only these, these things can only talk on that port, then your attack surface is much lower. And I think that's important. And per protocol as well, you want to be able to say, you want to be, be able to specify. Right, so this automatic bi-directional trust, because this is what we often do, we often say, okay, I'm cool, this thing can talk to that thing. But what that often means is that thing can talk to this thing in the same way, and that's not necessary, and that's perhaps a less good security posture. Okay, so we talked a little bit before about ingress and egress. It's really important to make sure that you can control what comes to your thing and goes out from your thing. If you can't, that's bad. Um, external connectivity and routing, if in fact you have something that's providing a web service and you want to move it around to another cloud, you better have a way to redirect when something comes in for that URL. Instead of it going to this thing, now it's going to this thing over in that cloud. You need to be able to control that, ideally automatically, you know, when it comes to multi-cloud stuff. Um, it's really super nice to be able to say, only allow this version of Java in production. or Anything that is currently running this version of Java in production can keep on running, but don't allow anyone else to, to, to run anything that is of that version, because you want to be able to retire stuff. Right? So having that sort of stuff is cool. Um, you want to be able to say things about what is allowed to deploy in terms of CI, CD systems. You want to be able to say, okay, only things that have passed a security check are allowed in production, or only things that, that don't have uh, personal information in it, PII in it, or maybe you want to have something that says don't allow the letter E in any of my code. You know, whatever it is, whatever your business needs, you need to be able to control that when it comes to deployment. Um, and here's one of the tricks that nobody pays attention to usually. If you're in a situation, and I bet you've had a situation where you have a developer, and she is trying to debug her application, and that application talks to a database, and she's like, you know, I can't get this thing to work. Can you please give me, can, can you please tell me what transactions are going on on the server? So your choice at that moment is one of three things. One, give that person direct SSH access to the server. Do we all like that? Yes? Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I can, the sarcasm is dripping. Um, or you give, them a, you give this person a copy of the logs, but that's kind of static, right? And they want to run more stuff. So congratulations, they come to you n times, where n is potentially infinite, right? Or you set up something else. And I'm suggesting you want to have some other way to give them access, to allow them to, say, stream their logs, if you can, so they can see it. So you want to try to build that. And if you don't have that now, I bet you want it. Um, and clearly, we're talking about policy, so you need to control who can edit it and when. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another one of these away. Can we agree that it's okay? Yes, everybody cool with that? I just want to tell you about one thing that, that our stuff does that I haven't seen before, and if you want to go implement it, go for it. I think it's a great idea. It's not, it's, some people when they talk to me afterwards, they say, oh, well, that thing that your thing does, and this is only one of the cool things we do, uh, but it's one of the ones that makes me happy, so I want to tell you about it. Um, it is really cool if you can say, I've got an application and it's talking to a database. If you can have something that will stick, um, they don't like me to say man in the middle because that gives a bad connotation to it, but you all know what I mean. Um, when I say like, they, I guess the, the proper term would be inline component. So you have the application, you have this thing that we'll put there for you, and then you have the database. And your application talks to this thing, this thing talks to the database. Now what we can do with that sort of stuff is first off, the real credentials to the database can live in this thing. And it can have ephemeral credentials that are only good for the time of that discussion, 
right? Which means that if your developer were to check the credentials into GitHub, perhaps, or something like that, it doesn't matter because the, the credentials don't mean anything. They're only good for that particular connection. The other cool thing that is also really cool is um, uh, we can do policy right there. So we can say things like, don't ever let my app drop a table. And what will happen is, is your app can send drop table, drop table, drop table, as long as you like, and we'll just throw that on the floor. Or we can introduce artificial latency. Do you want to test, like Latency Monkey, do you want to test whether or not your application works well when your database gets bogged down? You can do stuff like that. And all sorts of cool stuff you can do if you get in the middle. So I think that's just a cool pattern. Um, I suggest you check it out. Okay, so what did I leave out? I don't actually like this, I don't actually like this list. I tell you what, what I'm gonna do, let's mirror this display right now, I don't like this list at all. Let's just get rid of these. What did I leave out? Let's actually go here. Oh, you guys thought that you were, that you were just gonna sit here and listen. Oh, no, no, that's not the way it works. No, 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 this is not like prayer. Okay, I want you to participate. What I want, I guess, sorry, not, that's gonna get me in a weird place. Let's not talk about that. Um, I want you to tell me what I left out. What do you think you need in the land of policy? that you really want, that I haven't discussed. And I'm cool with awkward silences, so. Applying the policy. So you want, a, you want a better way to apply policies, okay? That's good, I like that. Number three, these guys are working, this is good. You need a way to communicate policy, that's really interesting, okay. No, I totally mean it. That's, 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 an interesting, that's an interesting approach. I mean, an interesting thing that I think we should think about. Obviously, you can tell I can spell. Communicate. Let's pick that one. Oh, come on. Let's see. Okay. Well, I think that I asserted that I said automated enforcement. So I, let's just assume that's in that. Right? Because I had that picture of the Robocop. I think that counts. <laughs> what else? But, but I, mean, I mean, like, keep on going, though. What else? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, one at a time, please. Updates. Updates. You want to figure out how to handle policy update. I agree. What else? There, was one, there were two at the same time. Okay, tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that doc. Right? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll use, I'll use your term. I'm totally fine with that. References. Yes. Okay. Let's get one more. I'm sure there's more. Someone behind me, someone's, oh, someone's up there, go ahead. Testing. Um, I, I heard testing, I want to write that down, but tell me what you mean by usage so I can capture it. Oh, yeah, 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 you want some sort of auditing, right? Auditing, stuff like that. Okay, so I think, that's actually, no, 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 cut it out, cut it out, stop mirroring. Oh, we did stop mirroring, excellent. Okay, so five other things that I think you really want to have in any policy system that you use is better way to apply standards and references um, policy, oh, that's horrible. I cannot leave that on the slide. Sorry. Policy, why didn't you guys stop me? You were sitting right there. It's not, yeah, that's, that, that's true. Just ask my spouse. Um, testing, right, exactly. Testing and auditing. These are things that you have to absolutely have. I'm glad I could share that with you. Okay, so instead of being uh, annoying and just not telling you where you can actually find this sort of stuff, let me give you some idea. But unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. Um, the bad news is that you're not probably going to get this level of granularity of policy from your cloud provider if you're going to go to them. So Amazon is usually ahead of the curve on a lot of things. They have the ability to set instance parameters and other stuff like that, um, ACLs like that, but it doesn't give you the granularity that we're talking about. Like you can say, I only want this kind of, EC this kind of EC2 instance, but you can't be more specific than that. Um, Azure is getting better, but when I made this slide, they only had um, role-based access control that had three set roles, and if you wanted another role, it was great. We have three set, three, these three set roles, and you know, if you really want another one, you could get those three. Um, so, um, and so same with GC, which is not GCP, where they were just basically saying, hey, if team members have edit permissions, congratulations, they can do stuff. Right, which is not exactly the level you want. And I don't know who here has the pleasure of working with SoftLayer. Anybody? 
Okay, so if you've not worked with SoftLayer, when I actually contacted them and said, hey, where can I find policy controls in your system? They said, well, it's actually, you know, whatever you can set in the GUI is going to be fine for you. And so I went to their GUI, and there were like 70, and I counted them, some odd checkboxes, not all about policy, but just in general. And I thought, oh my, you know, oh my lord, uh, like, you know, it's so many checkboxes. So, yeah. Um, but what about your platform, okay? Um, anybody know what that is? Mesosphere, that's right. Okay, so the bad news is they're getting slightly better but in terms of in the very, very latest release, but not really. There isn't really anything there uh, when it comes to this sort of policy sort of stuff. For, for reasons we can talk about. This one, let's play, let's play guess that, guess that thing. Open, open, open. Uh, uh, which one? Stack or shift? Come on, folks. Okay, thanks. Yeah, not yet. So um, there is some work in, in this world called Congress. And what Congress is, is meant to be this sort of generic policy engine. And the way Congress is supposed to work is that you, all your components get feed their logs and other stuff to Congress. And Congress will then say, oops, somebody did something wrong. And then maybe it can run some sort of amelioration script. Now that, to me, isn't sounding like what you really want. You know, like, I mean, I guess that's the way sort of you know, sort of police work to a certain extent, right? It's not the case that, that, that sometimes, sometimes they can prevent things from happening, but often they have to show up after the fact and say, I'm sorry, let me help you. So I don't think that's the way you want to go. And I'm going to pull my last one here. Oops, sorry, not yet. I'm going to pull my last, not, not quite yet. This one? Sorry, we know, who is this? Yeah, so Kubernetes is, is, is actually a little further along than both of these in that it has things like quotas and stuff like that, and not, they're starting to add some, uh, some role-based access stuff to it. It's getting better. Okay, here's where I pull my last one. Okay. It is the case that this is something we've been thinking about for like, you know, four and a half years at this point. Um, and if you want to sort of play with policy in action, you should definitely check out the stuff that we do. And there's a free version that I'll point you out later if you care about. But the thing is, is that, that we have a platform whose whole idea is to stick policy in the middle. And what could you do if you have policy? And I want you to play with that at some point. So I think what I've just get done is given you your own pitchfork and your own torch so they can go to all places. And I don't mean just to me, but go, go, to, go to everyone out there and say, where is your policy controls? Where is this sort of stuff there? I want it, I want it, I want it, right? So now you have your own thing. And with that, I'm going to get, uh, oh, I'll point to this. If you want to actually grab the free version of our thing and play with it, it's at that URL. Um, but um, with that, I think I'm going to come to the end. Oh, and uh, before I do, one thing I should mention is I actually, because I'm a DevOps person, had another block in my pocket, um, just in case. Anyway, thank you very much. It used to do a lot of role-based access stuff for Sun and Netscape. And when I first looked at Amazon, what I saw was IAM, mm -hmm. and when I looked at IAM, I said, well, there's my role-based role management in terms of defining a user and then driving that user back into the system into, at, at the code level to say that, okay, developers, this is the user, this is the guy that does this work, right. and I can shut them down at that level. So how does... I am, and those things fit in with some of the other things. That you're so I am is the closest thing I think to what you want in that they do have they do have more knobs and the ability to do this. I think the thing is is that you want to be able to tell sort of more complex stories because sometimes you want to control down at the user level, but sometimes you want to control down at the environment level. Sometimes you want to say, in production, this is okay. In development, this is okay. And those could be different things, but that's not per user, right? Um, or maybe it's per team, or maybe it's this year, maybe it's this project. And so you want to have some sort of uh, ability to, to be more expressive. Our stuff uses a policy language to be expressive because you really want to, you want to say more than just, um, this person can do X, because it's very complex. It also gets really tricky if this person's on two different teams, right? And now, okay, great. You know, like, what does that mean? You know, so, oh, another mic, point game mic, yes. Other questions? I saw another hand go up. If you could do a small rendition of my way, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so it sounds like you, there were maybe a couple of different categories of policies that you talked about. Yeah. So with the man in the middle, sort of like a messaging policy between microservices, uh, obviously like admin type uh, provisioning policies. Yep. What, what other kind of categories of policies uh, would you consider to implement? So, okay, so I started off with that sort of notion that there are kind of four things you want to control. What can you run? You know, like for, for everyone, what can, you, what can you run? What can it talk to? Where can it live? 
and how many resources can it consume? And so you basically take those four things into every one of your little uh, realm, every one of the realms that you're talking about. Like, uh, as you said, exactly, microservices or between applications and databases is one place. Um, provisioning you want to think about um, and using stuff. Um, you also want to think about communication. You also want to think about um, move, when, you, when you move stuff around. Ideally, it's, uh, you need your policy system to deal well with moving your workloads around. Like, if in fact, if you moved your stuff from AWS to GCP, because let's say, let's say Google is having a fire sale, right, and you, just, and you want to do some sort of cloud arbitrage, um, your, everything has to be true over there too. Right, so I think that there, so I think that there are there are other realms, and I think it's kind of environment specific as to where you want to apply it, and that's why I like the idea of, of language because languages are very expressive and it can be used in, you know, we can we can use we're using language now in this context. Um, I, it would be a very different context if we were outside in the hallway and I was yelling at you because you didn't wash the dishes, right? But but the same language is going is going to hold for both of those, and make sure you do the dishes. Good. So you mentioned uh, sharing logs. Yeah. By not giving SSH. Yeah. How do you go about doing that without spending a million dollars? So how do you do it without spending a million dollars? I think you're saying, <coughs> right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. So there are two ways that there are two ways that I know that you can do that. Um, in various places, including us and like Kubernetes, do have this. Thing number one is to do what you're talking about, which is export your export your logs out to some sort of thing that consumes logs. Right, and that can be that can be. I mean, like it's not free in user time, but that can be like an elk stack, or it can be like super spiffy, spunky. Please give me the the thing that has the the jewel encrusted, you know, uh, log management system. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is you can build into what you're doing something that allows you to essentially let somebody have the ability to tail the logs of whatever's going on. Right? So in our thing, you just say APC job, job log, and it's going to show you everything that's coming out of standard, standard in and standard error, standard out and standard error. Right? Because it's just built in to know to just attach onto that and send what the, the contents of what's coming out in that container to somewhere else. So either you built it in or you export your stuff, in my opinion. But what you don't do is you don't, is you don't copy your logs to somebody um, because there's, that's fraught for a number of reasons in addition to the like it's static. Um, it's fraught because like they might have some data they don't need. Um, and what you don't do is you don't give them SSH access in. You know, as awesome as they are, in my opinion. Is that, is that good? Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.